beginning, in my understanding, um, a lot of people know what cap and trade is. Um, so that you know, is a state program to lower greenhouse gases, fight climate change, which is great. Um, in some communities, what a lot of people would call environmental justice communities, um, you're basically allowing a polluter to keep polluting in that community as long as they pay for it. So, so a lot of people said, you know, what is this doing for our communities? You're making polluters pay for, for dumping on us, basically. So AB 617 was kind of a compromise, negotiated bill to go along with cap and trade that said um, we're actually going to put some attention and some resources into these communities where um, you know we want to lower the emissions that affect people's health and the public health, especially in disadvantaged communities or environmental justice communities where you're already overburdened with so many different things. Um, you know, if you already have high unemployment and then your kid ends up with uh, asthma or a respiratory problem, then you're now, you know, you're, you're having to pay more money that you don't have. So, you know, saying it's expensive to be poor, you know, so this, this kind of shows that. Uh, well, it is definitely... It's definitely given us a chance to advocate for issues we've been advocating for for a long time um, and bringing them to the attention of, of certain agencies or government officials that are now, you know, their job or one main part of their job is to pay attention to. Um, so, you know, we've been, we've been to, before AB 617, we were advocating that, you know, there are a couple of communities in Stanislaus County that have multiple sources of pollution that are harmful to public health and there are what we would call cumulative impacts and you know the fight to get um, agencies to take into account cumulative impacts um, has been going on for a long time even before me um, so now it, you know AB 617 has given a real good uh, reason or excuse for for not only uh, us to be able to advocate for those things but to have an audience of people at the Air Resources Board or wherever it may be that whose, whose job it is to, to listen to those issues now and figure out where the best place to put resources is. So uh, if you are from a community that's already been chosen um, as a, a community that's going to receive resources, funding, um, possibly air monitoring or, or emissions reduction plan. Um, if you live in one of those communities, you can you know, find out which organization got uh, a grant, got resources to work on those issues, and find out when their next meeting is. Um, they probably have a website or a phone number or an email address. Um, call them, uh, send them an email, and ask, you know, hey, what's going on with this? I'd like to be involved. Um, they're supposed to have uh, steering committees, and they might already be have members on the steering committees. But uh, you know, you can maybe attend the meetings. Somebody might drop off of the steering committee, and you can say, "Hey, you know, I'm just a regular citizen that yeah, I've always wondered, you know, what's up with this, uh, you know, polluting source in our community? Is something being done about it?" And and actually have a chance to make your voice heard personally. Um, if you if you don't live in a community that hasn't um, specifically been chosen for resources, then you even have a better opportunity to to help um, fight for resources to come to your community. So if you if you're not already involved with an organization, i you know you can always just look up you know is there a, a group locally that works on environmental justice or a group locally that works on air quality specifically. Uh, just look that up, and if you find a group, give them a call, email, and say, hey, when's your next meeting? what's going on with this, um, and you know, at least from my experience, all the community-based organizations are always welcoming more people, and sometimes it's actually, you know, the, the issue is trying to get more of the public involved, um, because we understand people have jobs and families and a lot of meetings or, you know, for people that do this kind of thing for a living, so they're on a Tuesday at 10 a.m., and you there's no way you can make it, so just even advocating for hey, you know, you need to do something once in a while that's in the evening or on the weekend or that is just more accessible to, um, you know, your, your everyday concerned citizens.